today, mate. Today you're going to be talking to yourself about GDP. Uh, what is GDP? Gross domestic, gross domestic product, hereby referred to as GDP, is the total market value of all goods and services produced in a given period. Gross domestic product is the total market value of all goods and services produced in a given period. Now there are three methods of measuring GDP. They are the production method, the expenditure method, and they are the income method. Simply, goods made, services made, money spent, money earned. All right, let's talk about the production method. Now, this is a flow variable, which means it is always going, and you simply take a snippet of a year or a quarter, and you measure it during that time to get a relative GDP. It is the the production method is made up of the marketable quantity, so the amount, times the market value, times the price. So if you make five apples and they're a dollar each, your GDP is five dollars. Okay. Now, also important is the intermediary costs. All right. Say you have wheat. Right? You produce 10 wheat, yeah? five of that goes to the farm and is sold as wheat. Yeah? The other five is sold to the supermarket as bread. And finally, one is sold in a cafe as a sandwich. You will take the five wheat here, the five bread, sorry, the four bread here, and the one sandwich here. You'll add them up, so say a dollar each, two dollars each, five dollars each. It'll be five plus eight plus five. Do the math. <laughs> so the second is the expenditure method. Again, this is the total amount of money spent. It is comprised of the consumption, expenditure, so household, investment, I'll write that up later. Alright, so consumption, investment, government, expenditure, and net exports. Okay, Consumption expenditure is the household purchases, what you and I make. Investment expenditure is what firms purchase. Yeah, this is what the government purchases. The net exports is the imports, sorry, exports to other countries minus imports from other countries. This will give you a dollar amount and it will tell you what you're worth in exports. Now, Example of this will be your grocery list. An example of this will be in a mutual fund, stocks and co. And for the government, it'll be public infrastructure. Such that your GDP by expenditure is equal to, that is a summation symbol, C plus I plus G plus NX. Doesn't account for money saved though, that's one drawback of the expenditure method. <sighs> now the income method, very quickly, is the summation of the income from labor and from capital. So labor is from work, these are the symbols by the way, I do know how to spell capital, and this is from investment. In 2016 in Australia, that number was about 49% and 51%. 
Now, inclusions and exclusions. Yeah. Included in the GPE, GDP is agricultural production. Yep. Uh, all of your services, which make up about 70% of the Australian GDP. All natural resources exported. And all public expenditure. Yeah, this is included but not limited to. Exclusions include imported goods. Yeah, if you sell something from China, that counts towards China's GDP, not Australia's GDP. Second hand goods, yeah, they've already been counted in GDP in the year they were first purchased. Intermediate goods, which is what you described before with the cafe and the sandwiches and the supermarket, yeah. It only counts the GP GDP during its final stage, during its ultimate state before consumption. Uh, and income in local currency paid overseas. So if I work as an actuary in China and get paid in Australian dollars by an Australian firm, that counts towards Australian, this is interesting, GDP. However, Japan's gross national product. No, other way around. So, doesn't count in the GDP because it's overseas. Yeah, however, it does count in your gross national product because it's still an Australian product despite being overseas. Alright, nominal versus real GDP. Yeah. The nominal GDP is affected by inflation to produce your real GDP. Simply put, if you sell 10 cars worth $20,000 each in 2016, and then the next year you sell 10 cars worth, you know, Twenty-one thousand dollars each in two thousand seventeen. Your nominal GDP will increase by what's that? Five percent. However, your real GDP will increase only by nothing. It won't increase. It won't have increase. Your Real GDP uses the price on a base year to calculate the increase. Since the price of the 2017 model only increased in this example because of inflation, your real GDP will be 0%. However, say you didn't sell 10 cars in 2017. Say you sold 20 cars in 2017. Yeah, to the collective value of 42,000. Your nominal GDP has increased more than double. It's gone up by, I think, 110%. Can't bother to work it out. Your real GDP has changed by the price used here for this value. Okay, so 10 cars worth $20,000, yeah, $2,000 per car, that means it was $40,000. So an increase from $20,000 to $40,000 is only a 110%, sorry, is only a 100% increase. That is in the real GDP. Now, if you use 2017 as your base year, yeah, the cars are approximately worth 2,100, let's say. That may not necessarily be right. Now, 10 cars collectively worth 2,100 will then become 20 cars collectively worth 4,200. Yeah? That just means the real GDP will increase by. About 105%. 
Okay? Now, this is elementary. It simply means as you change the base year, the base proportions increase can change. Okay? Because the price will change and the quantity will change. So what you do to get the actual GDP increase is you take these and you get the average. So you would say that the GDP increase ultimately in this example is 102.5%.